Hello, this is D, and I'm back with another video. Well, I've received my PS4 Pro a couple of days ago, as you all know, and I've been doing extensive testing over the last few days. Now, I've been testing the PS4 Pro in Pro mode, in regular mode, and then I've been comparing it to the regular PS4. I'm quite confident enough that I've had enough time with the system to give you guys my impression and review of the PS4 Pro. Now, one thing that I liked about the PS4 Pro is that the charge time for the controller was quick, and I, I noticed that the uh, battery life lasted a lot more. Uh, the battery is still not dead, and I've been gaming on it quite vigorously the last 48 hours just testing out the system. So I'm happy to report that the PS4 Pro does offer better uh, controller battery life. Uh, it also has better HDR. This is likely due to the 2.0 ports that are on the uh, PS4 Pro. And of course, you know, HDR has to be done over HDMI 2.0a. Now, the regular PS4 is trying to do HDR over HDMI 1.4. And as many have been finding out, and myself included, it is quite dark. Now, I can say on the PS4 Pro that the same HDR games are much brighter. Yes, there are some scenes that are still dark and this is likely due to the grading of HDR as I believe these games weren't designed with HDR, they just had it tacked on. So some games are just not going to look optimal in HDR because it was tacked on. However, on the PS4 Pro, they are brighter and they just look better than the regular PS4. Uh, you also get better anti-aliasing and of course a higher resolution. Yes, we have some games that are going to be 4K 60 frames per second. Uh, these are not going to be uh, mostly AAA games. These are going to be your smaller games, your indie games. And of course, you know, you have some sports games. Uh, the majority of the games will be either upscaled from 1440p or they will be using some checkerboard method. Uh, the system is frankly not powerful enough to have 4K 60 frames per second on AAA games that are demanding. Uh, another thing that I liked is that the PS4 Pro has a pro mode, of course, where you can uh, choose uh, higher graphic fidelity, uh, you can choose 60 frames per second mode, you can choose 1080p mode, and I do like the fact that it gives you options. Uh, the transferring of data from your original PS4 to your PS4 Pro is quite painless. I was watching some videos before I got my system and they were saying, oh, it took them nine hours to transfer the data. Well, apparently launch day looks like there was an update that was employed as I had about 230 gigs in my system and it took me roughly about an hour to transfer the data. So if you could say put it in half at 130 gigs, you could probably get it all done in 30 minutes or less. Another thing that I enjoy about the PS4 Pro is that it streams in 1080p 60 frames per second directly to YouTube. This is awesome. This is something I wish Microsoft would do. I wish I could do this from my Xbox One. And I have to say this is a great feature. Uh, it's uh, 1080p 60 frames per second. Like what more could you ask for? Also, the video capture is improved on the PS4 Pro. You have it at 1080p 30 frames per second and it's in great quality and I think this is awesome and of course you can load it up you can upload it to YouTube directly from your PS4 Pro this is another feature that I wish Microsoft would get and hopefully in the future they can implement it but right now the PS4 Pro is doing this and it is an excellent addition of course, uh, games that aren't supported in the PS4 Pro will be upscaled regardless to a 4K resolution. So you're going to get uh, a, a tighter resolution even if the game doesn't support uh, PS4 Pro mode as the system will upscale it anyways. And I have to admit that the uh, downloads on the original PS4, they were so slow. On the PS4 Pro, they are greatly increased in speed. And this is welcomed because, you know, a lot of people are going digital now. And uh, I have a good high, speed in, I have good high speed internet connection. And on the original PS4, it would still take me a long time to download something. So uh, this is welcome that you can download a lot faster on your PS4 Pro. Now, there are things that I don't like about the PS4 Pro. I think it's kind of big. Um, when I was taking out the box, uh, I was quite shocked to see how big it was. Um, I knew it would be bigger than the Xbox One S, but it is quite a bit bigger than the Xbox One S. It's bigger than the uh, original PS4, and of course, it's bigger than the Slim. And I find that it's a little bit heavy, and the aesthetics of the system, it's like, eh. Like, it's nothing that grabs me. I think the original PS4 is a much better looking console. 
Now another thing I noticed is that it has the same interface as the original PS4. Yes, I know they're not touting it as a new system, but it kind of is a new system. And I would like to feel like I have a new console. You know, once you boot it up, it's pretty much like your original PS4. In fact, it is exactly like your original PS4, the layout. So you don't really feel like you're getting a new console. I don't know, this might be a small thing, but it was something that grinded my gears anyways. Um, I find that the PS4 Pro still runs hot and it's still quite loud. Uh, you would think that they would um, design the system to be a little bit more quieter because some people did complain that the PS4 uh, was quite loud and I thought that they would reduce that but it's roughly about the same uh, loudness as the original one and it definitely gets hot. Like I put my hand on the bottom of the console or on the top of the console or at the back especially at the back I can feel it blowing all that I can feel all that heat on my hand being blown out from the system and it does still get hot I, I wish it could run as quiet and cool as the Xbox One S but that's neither here nor there um, another thing is that it has no UHD 4k blu-ray player now this is a huge oversight on Sony's part I don't know why they wouldn't put a 4K Blu-ray player in this thing. They're touting the system as a 4K gaming system, yet you don't have a 4K Blu-ray player. Makes no sense to me, and I think it will actually hurt them in the long run because some people will just go out and grab an Xbox One S for the simple fact that it's the cheapest 4K Blu-ray player on the market. I found that the box that the PS4 Pro came in was quite cheap. As I was taking out components of the box, they were falling out. I just thought the packaging was really cheap. The plastic was really cheap. It just looked like, it just didn't feel like a quality or a premium product, just the way that it was boxed. And of course, the console looks cheap, so we can assume that Sony is just trying to cut down on costs. Uh, now, a lot of people are also getting confused on what settings they should use for their PS4 Pro. Should you use U, 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 sorry, YUV 420 or YUV 422? Or should you use RGB full, limited, or automatic? Now, for those that are confused on what to use, you should use RGB full for non-HDR gaming. For HDR movies and gaming, you should use YUV 420. Now, if you set it to automatic, and you're watching HDR uh, gaming or you're watching HDR movie, it will switch to YUV422. Now, HDR10 is graded with the chroma subsampling of YUV420. So do not use YUV422. You may get some banding. Now, uh, another thing that I don't like about the PS4 Pro is that not many games support the full features. Yes, NBA 2K17 does. It's native 4K, 60 frames per second. But once again, this is not a demanding game. Sports games are quite easy to run. Now, Battlefield 1, it just got a pro update last night, apparently, and HDR is on it. Titanfall 2, Call of Duty Infinite Warfare, and Ratchet and & Clank, they all use these features very well, but there's just not a lot of games to sue. Um, to uh, justify the purchase of the PS4 Pro right now. Yes, you do get a better image quality period. The jump though, it's not huge. Some games look the same with just better anti-aliasing on a 1080p TV. Yes, lots of PS4 games have good AA already, so the difference is slight. Some games do HDR badly. Infamous Last Sun and First Light have better HDR on the Pro, but they are still graded bad. I don't know, it just has severely crushed blacks and shadow details. Yes, the Pro, it's, it looks better, it's brighter, but I can just tell that those games were not graded properly. Now, these games need to be made with HDR from the start. Now, Last of Us HDR looks fine. There's nothing dark about it. It looks pretty good. Now, Ratchet & Clank stands out for me in the Pro mode, as it offers great graphics. I don't know, I find it has better AA, better resolution. The image quality with HDR in this game is through the roof, and in my opinion, it's one of the best uses of the Pro so far. Now, PSVR sees the biggest upgrade, in my opinion, with the Pro. Rigs, VR Worlds, Thumper, Drive Club VR, Robinson the Journey, The Playroom VR, Until Dawn, I'm sorry, Until Dawn, Rush of Blood, and Battlezone all see a higher resolution and higher graphic fidelity. The PSVR images just look sharper with better AA and textures, and the super sampling from the higher resolution also helps to give you a cleaner image. 
Now, some games are not performing as good as the regular PS4. Sometimes they get a lower frame rate of up to 6 to 10 frames per second. Now, granted, those games are running at a higher resolution. I'll give you an example. The Last of Us uses 1880p when you put it in base PS4 mode. On the Pro, it then down samples and the frames per second is lower. Now this is due to the CPU being the bottleneck. Now the game needs to be patched so it can support native 1080p and 60 frames per second. When this happens, it should work like the original. And hopefully uh, they patch this out quickly because you know if we look at the documents that leaked out in the summer, they said that uh, the PS4 Pro mode cannot have lower frames per second than the original PS4. So I'm gonna hold them to this and hopefully they will patch it. Now, should you grab yourself a PS4 Pro if you have a PS4 now? Uh, if you're a 1080p user, I would say no, it's not worth it. Yes, you'll get better AA and a slightly sharp, sharper image. Yes, uh, some games will have higher frames per second, but it's just not worth it over the regular PS4. Not yet, in my opinion. Now, 4K TV owners will see a bit more benefits. They'll get better anti-aliasing, better HDR. Of course, they get the higher res and the checkerboard rendering. But once again, you have no 4K Blu-ray player, which really hurts this device, and I think it's a huge oversight. Now, not many games show a huge improvement in 4K. Some look great, like NBA 2K17, Infinite Warfare, and like I said, I heard Battlefield 1 looks good too. Ratchet & Clank looked great. That game, it looked like CGI to me in pro mode, and like I said, one of the better games. But if you have a 4K set and want a PS4, then yeah, you'll see some more benefits. Uh, I don't know. If you have a PS4 and a 4K T, honestly, it's not worth it right now, unless you have the money or you can get a good amount for your old PS4. PSVR users who have a vanilla PS4 and enjoy PSVR, I think you guys should upgrade as the difference is quite noticeable and the experience is much better in my opinion. So, I don't know. Overall, I, I say meh on the PS4 Pro. It's not an absolute needed upgrade. And like hopefully with future games like Days Gone, God of War, Horizon, we'll get to see the PS4 Pro shine. But right now, I gotta say the PS4 Pro, it just does a little bit more. And I got to give it a 7.5 out of 10. Anyways, I want to thank you guys for watching this video. I ask you guys to share and, sub and subscribe to the channel and leave your comments down below. I want to know what you guys think. Uh, if you guys have a PS4 Pro, do you guys agree? Do you disagree with me? Uh, are you guys going to get a PS4 Pro or are you going to hold off until Xbox Scorpio? Anyways, like I said, leave your comments below and I'll see you guys on the next one.